Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Ancient Aliens with me, your host, Matt Kors, where we will be diving into the secrets of Egypt and their partnership with aliens from the heavens above to build the pyramids and the sphinx that we all know and love. This is going to be a journey. It's going to be, dare I say it, a journey and a half as we go back into time, peer through a window that allows us to see how our ancestors built some of the most magnificent statues we know today. Now, as we get into a little bit of a history lesson, as we go through this journey, we're also going to be talking about the stock market because as many of us know, the ancient Egyptians, ancient aliens, all loved degenerately trading on Fridays. And folks, that's what we have today. Yes, we are concluding the week, but we are kicking off a new month, TGIF. Hopefully, we make a couple dinero here and there to pay for our old Texas Roadhouse bill. Folks, it's going to be a big one today. We have some things to get into. Some Fed members are already speaking this morning. We're going to break that down. We have a couple macroeconomic events that we're going to be getting into. We have some news about Elon Musk now suing Sam Altman and OpenAI saying, uh-uh, honey, don't want you doing that. We're going to get into some seasonality. I have some update on Bitcoin, record-breaking numbers yesterday. Bitcoin just did something that Wall Street has never, ever, ever, ever seen before the appetite from wall street crazy in fact bitcoin is now so popular that there is a big head of a financial institution that just got fired because he was a negative nancy when it comes to the world of crypto specifically bitcoin so we're going to get into that because hey it's funny when you're so wrong that you lose your job right right it's that's funny are we going to laugh about that or is it still a little too soon do we have to be sad that this multi multi millionaire, if not billionaire, lost his job because he was so, I guess, unwilling to realize where monetary policy is going, where money is going? Anyway, we're going to get into that. We're going to do some degenerate trading. We're going to do a little bit of stat research. And I, folks, I cannot express to you how incredibly intolerable I'm going to be today pitching the Discord. Because at 11 a.m., within an hour and 56 minutes, prices are going up. Prices go up at 11 a.m. today. 11 a.m., 11 a.m., 11 a.m. So for the next hour and 56 minutes, not only are you going to learn about how aliens built the pyramids, not only are you going to be learning about the newest frontier of high-end fashion, but you are you're going to be dreaming about the pitches that I make for the Discord today. So that that's what's going to be going on. That is 100% what's going to be going on. But folks, before we do any of that, I know I've set this show up as if it's going to be a lofty one. One for the record books, and it is. But before we do that, I would ask all of you very, very kindly to take 10 seconds out of your day, go to chat, and wish the producer the man behind the scenes, the artist of the show, Mr. Chaos in Roswell, a happy, happy birthday. Folks, is it against child labor laws that I employ a 12-year-old to do every aspect of work that I don't want to do? Probably. I don't know. I'm not really up to date on employment law, but he is finally, finally getting into those mid, mid-teens. So it's very exciting. It's not very, very often that you get to the point where you're almost invited to the fun high school parties. We all remember it. We're all reminiscing. So folks, everyone, take a quick, quick second. If you see chaos in chat, if you see him on the streets, wish him a big happy birthday. Uh, it's exciting stuff. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. If you don't wish him a happy birthday, I'm going to find you. And it's not, it's not going to be pretty. Not only am I going to find you, but the ancient aliens are also going to find you. All right, folks, with that out of the way, if you see him, wish him a happy birthday. Let's see what in the world is going on in the world today. Stock feature slip after Nasdaq gets first record close in more than two years. So if we take a little looky-see at the market, it's not really slipping. Like yesterday, we vomited, then we popped, and we're slowly drifting up. Yeah, there was a 
bit of negativity this morning around 5 a.m. because we got the inflation report out of the Eurozone. Remember those people that we kicked their ass in two world wars back to back? Well, their inflation coming in a little bit hotter than expected, so market dropping. Since then, we kind of popped, but the pop wasn't so good because Barkin's already speaking this morning. If you don't know who Barkin is, he's a Fed member. He's on the FOMC, and he's like, I don't even know if we're going to have rate cuts this year, honestly. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And remember, that's a little bit awkward because the whole market was betting on like six rate cuts. No, all right, maybe five. All right, cool. Yeah, no, we meant four this whole time. Ah, three, that sounds good to us. So the Fed's been saying, hey, bring your expectations down. And the market's like, "Mm -mm, brother, no way, Jose. No way, Jose. And then Barkin's speaking this morning and he's like, ah, zero? What, What about that? So the market's like, dude, chill like it's a friday you don't have to like say that's the monday type of talk you don't do that on a friday so anyway that's kind of the stuff that's been going down this morning that had an impact on the post-market session last night and then the pre-market session this morning obviously pre-market lots more volatility just because of the cpi report coming out of europe and then also some of barkin's early early morning comments animal spirits are back in the market fueling a 2021 like speculative activity we are so back, dude. Dude, retail, meme mania, doing degenerate things. Being a degen, I don't know if it ever left style, but it's definitely even more back in style. Bitcoin to the moon. SPACs on the rise. Chat room trading all the rage. Sign up for the fucking Discord today. It is free. Prices increase at 11 a.m. If I find out that you're watching this show and you didn't take advantage of the free month, which is pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video, I will call your mother. I'm not going to text her. I'm not going to email her. I will call her while she's at work. It will be awkward for you. It will be awkward for me. It will be awkward for her. Chating, chat room trading is all the rage. Get in. Be the cool. Don't be a fucking loser. Don't go to Loserville. If if you don't sign up for the Discord, you're from Loserville. Just I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm also I'm just hitting you with some hard facts. Don't don't shoot the messenger. All right. I'm just I'm letting you know what's up. It can feel like 2021 all over again. The Fed's rate cut signal in December triggered a furious rally to record highs, unleashing animal spirits that are fueling similar speculative activities from the depths of the pandemic. Now, this doesn't really have much to do with the show, but I've thought a lot about what my animal spirit would be. And I've I've landed on sloth. Because, like, dude... There's not really a day that passes that I think, oh, I want, like, I just want to crush, crush a nap right now. Every six days out of the week, a thought comes out. I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be great right now. A freaking nap. And I feel like that's what sloths are kind of up to as well. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. The animal spirits are reviving. When people want to play safe, they don't buy emerging market distressed debt. Nigeria and Argentina aren't the places to be, but they are now. The catalyst for all this is the Fed pivot. Talk about being so out of the world of retail that you actually think retail is paying attention to distressed debt in emerging markets. Folks, I don't even know how to spell distressed debt in emerging markets. Honestly, I'm not in even really sure what is an emerging market. And I feel like I'm so down this road that I'm scared to ask. I think, is an emer- is it just any market that's not the US or Europe? Is that what we call it? Does anyone know what an emerging market? I feel like it's a term we say in Wall Street, but no one actually knows it to the point that we're just kind of like, ah, that's an emerging market. Like, hypothetically, if I started selling drugs on a small Caribbean island, would that be an emerging market? Like, what is and what isn't? I, I don't think anyone knows. Anyway, I'm already going off the rails on that one. Let's get into the fun stuff. The Return of YOLO. It's the, it's the newest Lord of the Rings, The Return of the YOLO. Was not on my February bingo card. You only w- live once enthusiasm. Activity on message boards is at the highest level since March of 2020. I need to wake up every morning to see 
What stock can rally 50% by Friday? <laughs> U.S. equities have entered a period of euphoria. Yes, it has. So it's not just the meme stuff. It's not just emerging markets, which no one knows what that is. But even SPACs are starting to rip again. SPACs getting a lot more popular. Uh, and this is just how some... Whoa, did that just yell at me? What the fuck? Why is that guy yelling at me? Uh, you guys didn't hear the audio, but it was that was a weird ad. Anywho, yeah, we're so back. We're, we're, we're so back. Now, you should probably apply some of the lessons that you learned on the last cycle of all this of maybe don't be overly greedy maybe have some sort of a stop maybe have some sort of a trailing stop maybe when you make your initial investment take that out and then just play with the casino's money there are some crazy aspects of like the first thing we all experienced in 2020 2021 that you should apply now and i know you're probably shaking your head you're like yes yes master matt i will be applying that and then you're like no i'm not i'm not gonna this time's different. I know. I get it. I have that voice in my head too. But in a moment of reality, if you're attempting to win at this game of trading, remember bulls and bears eat, hogs get slaughtered. Don't don't be the hog that gets slaughtered here. Greed, not necessarily a benefit all the time. Uh, like I said this morning, CPI out of the Eurozone came in a wee bit hot. They were expecting 2.5, came in at 2.6, but is still lower than last month's reading. And then uh, in 32 minutes, we get the S&P Global US Manufacturing, and later on, we get some ISM numbers. So there are some reports to pay attention to today. But before we talk about things going on in the US, let's talk about how China is fully on tilt, and I have the proof. I'm not going to get into every nitty gritty detail. And as we're talking about emerging markets, I don't know if China is technically considered one, but it is one I wouldn't even touch with your trading account because things are no bueno, mi amigo. President Xi Jinping's one man rule over China's economy is spurring unrest. President Xi Jinping's consolidation of power has cleared the path for him to break China's cycle of debt driven growth and put the economy on a more sustainable footing, but there's a big problem. He's failing to convince the nation that it's a good idea. Well, when you have political unrest, a shadow banking crisis, a real estate crisis, a population crisis, and you know, just it all adds up to not being good vibes. And that's what happens when your stock market year to date, as other countries, other markets are hitting new highs, yours is down a roughly 10%. No bueno situation. As the world's second biggest economy, for now, undergoes a prolonged slowdown, Xi's move to shun the old playbook of unleashing broad stimulus is spurring discontent. The China Descent Monitor, a project of U.S.-based Freedom House that collects information on protests, says economic demonstrations have remained elevated since August, with many focused on labor disputes and a real estate crisis that's putting into household wealth. What does that mean? What's the TLDR there? The average retail person like you watching this video right now in China is pissed off to the point that they're actually demonstrating, protesting against an authoritarian government, and they don't really play by the same rules they do in the U.S. here, where we're a little bit of a pushover and you can kind of do what you want. Over there, it's legitimate risk. Thousands of angry retail investors last month flooded the U.S. embassies, page with criticism of the government's handling of the economy in the midst of a 7 trillion dollar stock punch to the freaking gut. I'm not saying million. I'm not saying billion. I'm saying seven trillion dollars was Thanos snapped out of existence. Elsewhere on the platform, some even insinuated that only a change in the top leadership would spur markets. Comments that managed to skirt censors before they were eventually taken down. Right here. Here's the proof I'm talking about. Economic protests have been higher since August up, up, and away as the market and the economy go down and down and down. Compounding the problem is a broad drop in wages among civil servants who have seen bonuses slash in recent years as indebted local governments struggle to earn enough revenue. And speaking of local governments, if you really check out this entire article from Bloomberg, I'll make sure it's posted below, you're going to realize it is actually the smallest factions of government unwilling to do the right thing, unwilling to dissent that that kind of 
like propels the problem higher and higher as you go up into the government. As long as my income was decent, I didn't complain. But now the economy is in bad shape. The leadership needs to show us some hope. And that's what they are basically unwilling to do. Xi's mentioning of high quality development more often. I thought this was kind of interesting because like we see that in the U.S. with our politicians of like, oh, like that's the good term. Just say, it, just say, it, just say it. Or even our companies like just say I. Just say crypto. It'll send our stock higher. Say it, say it, say it. Well, right here, apparently high quality development is the thing that they're pitching him to say because he's saying it all the time now. And guess what? It's not doing squat. Everyone in society and in the government seems to know there's a problem, but there's not been any decisions made about new approaches to solving those problems. What does this actually mean? Well, there's people with ideas of how to fix some of this, but they're all scared shitless to tell the president of China because that can come with some legitimate risk. The economic dissatisfaction comes after Xi's strict Rona zero policy undermined investor confidence in China and sparked an exodus of foreigners and citizens. This met, excuse me, this misstep was emblematic of the information cocoon the president is operating in. Basically, and we saw this with Stalin, people just don't want to tell him the truth. People cater to Xi's preference of information and policies, which make objective assessment really difficult. While abrupt decision to reverse course after rare nationwide protests against the Rona lockdowns showed China's top leadership can pivot, sudden policy turns usually carry a significant cost. Do we have metrics for the fact that people just don't want to tell them what's what and their actual like thoughts on it? 100%. Xi's probed record numbers of top officials for graft in 2023. Well, as you can see, if you start telling him things he doesn't like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, surprise, surprise, you get investigated. And then you end up coming to your own decision to retire, if you know what I'm talking about. That's why it's spiraling. And will anything really pull it out of the current spiral, I'm sure eventually he'll come to a realization of things are obviously no bueno. But in the meantime, in the short term, think it's just not good. And right now, the hemorrhaging is continuing week over week. We hear crazy steps being taken by China's government, Chinese regulators to stop the hemorrhaging to no avail. You cannot be a short seller. You cannot be a net seller. And the first half hour, the last half hour of the day, they are cracking down on quants. They're cracking down on high frequency trading. They're getting into the world of DMA. They're doing everything they can. And thus far, it's not bearing any fruit. That's why my prediction in the short term, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But the fact that we now have some metrics to show that the average person like you and me in China is getting pissed off enough to actually do something about it feels like something's a brewing. So as of now, it is the second economy in the world. And I've been saying this for weeks. I've been saying this for months. But I think if you fast forward one or two decades, it's only a matter of time before China actually falls to number four. I think it goes US. I think it then goes India. I think there's going to be a South American country in there, such as Brazil, and then China. Like I said, this is a one to two decade prediction. But just seeing how things are trending right now, I do not in any part believe that China will retain the silver medal in terms of economy that much longer. Obviously, time will tell. The other hot news of the day is Elon, as always. Elon Musk sues OpenAI Altman for breaching firm's founding mission. Suit says OpenAI put profits ahead of benefiting humanity. Musk is raising money for a competing venture called XAI. So a little bit of a legal news, and I don't know if they hired the guys from Suits, but I hope that they did. Elon Musk sues OpenAI and CEO Sam Altman over contract breach. Elon Musk is suing OpenAI and its CEO Sam Altman, among others, alleging they abandoned the company's founding mission to develop artificial intelligence for the benefit of humanity broadly. Musk's lawyer said that the tech billionaire was approached in 2015 by Altman and OpenAI co-founder Greg Brockman and agreed to form a non-profit lab that would develop AI or technically artificial general intelligence for the benefit of humanity. To this day, OpenAI Inc.'s website continues to profess that its charter is to ensure the AGI benefits of all of humanity. In reality, however, OpenAI has been transformed into a closed source de facto subsidiary of the largest technology company in the world, Microsoft. That's kind of undeniable. It, it is very, very undeniable that that's exactly what's going on. If you look into the history of OpenAI, it started off nonprofit. We're going to see 
if we can develop AI responsibly for the benefit of everyone. And then all of a sudden, the dollars started to fly and they started to really fly. OpenAI deal lets employees sell shares at 86 billion valuation. It's easy to be a person of the people, a man of the people, a woman of the people, when you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get a decent paycheck. A little bit different when it turns to the tune of billions of dollars. Musk lawyers said in the lawsuit that OpenAI is focused on maximizing profits for Microsoft breaks the agreement. Under its new board, it's not just developing, but it's actually refining an AGI to maximize profits for Microsoft rather than for the benefit of humanity. Musk angry about it. Obviously, he was one of the earliest investors. It probably would have gone nowhere without him about a decade ago. And now that it really caught traction, I mean, exploded within the past year, year and a half, AI in a general sense did. And then obviously all the drama with uh, Sam Altman himself getting kicked out, then being brought back, then it all going under Microsoft, then it kind of being under Microsoft, but not really, but all this confusion. Anyway, it's a crazy drama narrative. It feels like a nerdy AI San Francisco soap opera, but I'm always ready for the next episode. I'm always ready for the next one. Talk about other people getting sued. Your boy Trump is getting sued. Trump media sued by co-founders ahead of DWAC merger, potential setback for a lucrative deal. Former President Donald Trump was accused in a lawsuit of trying to quote unquote drastically dilute the value of stock shares in his social media company. United Atlantic Ventures alleges that Trump India and Technology Group engaged in quote unquote wrongful 11th hour dot 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 maneuvering to dilute UAV's minority stake in the media company. The Delaware Chancery Court lawsuit comes in advance of a planned merger of TMTG with a shell company called Digital World Acquisition Corp. We refer to it as DWAC. The merger could deliver billions of dollars to Trump, a potential lifeline as he faces more than 500 million in civil judgments in New York. So I'm bringing this up because I know some of you recently have been watching DWAC and you're paying attention to the vote. Is it going to go through? Is it not going to go through? This is another fly in the ointment, as old Rick Santilli would say. So I just want to keep you guys informed and apprised of that. Now, sign up for the newsletter, macrosoutlocals.com. It's free. It comes to your email inbox every single week. I break down the week, what I'm looking for in the upcoming week, all the major macroeconomic events for the upcoming week, all the earnings for the upcoming week, and then I highlight the ones that I think you're going to particularly care about. But probably most useful is actually the seasonality, and that's why I'm excited about today. S&P 500 seasonal bias for today, Friday, March 1st. This is created by looking at the success and or failure, the bullishness and or bearishness of this day over the past 25 years. So over the past two and a half decades, the bulls have won this day 72% of the time. That is a clear edge because the normal skew of the market is actually about 54% bullish. So there's a clear edge today to be a bull. The profit factor is 2.64. Every dollar spent has returned $2.64. Another good thing for the bulls. And then obviously the bias is bullish. And this equity curve is created by buying at open and selling at close on the S&P 500 futures market this individual day over the past 25 years. And you could see it's kind of up, a little flat, but then recently particularly up. So the normal, like starting off the day, not knowing anything else, I would, my initial bias would be bullish just because this day has favored the bulls historically. And then I go over all the option plays and the charts from the previous week, but it's cool. It's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. Speaking of seasonality, since we are kicking off a new month, I do want to let you know that March historically, not all the time, but historically is a very choppy month. Starts off a little bit bullish, then goes bearish, then it chops, then it's bullish, then it's bearish. Then we conclude with a choppy bullishness at the end. But overall, March kind of considered to not necessarily be the easiest month to trade. So I just want to let everyone know as we're kicking off the new month that the next four-ish weeks, just something to know. This is a month to be known with volatility, chop, is that going to be a guarantee of how it plays out this time? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I just want to let you know how things have played off historically. With that in mind, daily DGen report. Your boy, thick cores, the guy in your surround sound, on your TV right now. Perhaps you're watching me on a large home entertainment system. I don't know. I don't know how clear I'm coming through. I don't know what you could see. I don't know what you could hear. But this guy right here, the guy, like I said, pushing the frontier fashion every single day, bagged 3.7K 
yesterday alone. Uh, so Piper signal fired off early around 1024 bullish signal, three out of five confidence. And then here were the associated trades, a spy put credit spread, a Q put credit spread. They ended up printing, ended up making $34 for every 166. So every 166, you could scale it up as you want. So obviously this one trade paid for a month of the service. Well, until 11 this morning. And then here were my own trades. I ended up playing a little bit heavier, 40, 60, and then I scaled out, scaled out, and scaled out. Uh, so I got him for 60, sold 20, sold 20, sold 20. Here were all of it, 50% return, 72 and 83. Ended up locking in $3,760 before gains in one day. And then thus far on the week uh, from February 26th, if this ever loads, to February 29th, ending up uh, as of now, we'll see how today goes, up 4.4K on the week. So um, yes, yeah, started off Monday pretty bad. I took about a 5, 6K hit and then slowly earning it back throughout the week. And that means officially on February, the month of February, uh, locking in officially now that the month is concluded, just over 50K. All of this stuff is documented in real time. Ask anyone in the Discord. And the reason I'm bringing it up right now is at 11 a.m. today, the prices are going up. Pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video, you're going to find this link. Uh, ends March 1st. Folks, look at your calendar. Right now is March 1st. If you want to get grandfathered into cheaper prices, it's going from 30 a month to 50 a month. You could sign up right now for free. Your first month is free if the promo code Goonie is applied. If you come to this website, you'll notice like when it, you, it reloads. Here, let me reload this really quick. Uh, it takes a see how it takes a second for it to apply right there. Let it apply when you're checking out. Ensure that's applied. That's how you get your free month. So basically, the pitch is you get your first month for free. And then if you like it and you stick around, you're grandfathered into a cheaper price. It's going up to $50 in about two hours and 19 minutes. You have the next two hours, 19 minutes, and 50 seconds of your life to figure out how to do this. This, this is your official timer. Prices are going up. Then pin to the top of chat in the description of the video. First month is free. I beg of you to make sure Goonies actually applied. Double check at the checkout and you get my trades. Piper signals, other members trades, trading view, or excuse me, uh, trading competitions. You get the newsletter, you get private lectures every single weekend. You get a whole bunch of stuff that is by far way more valuable than the cost. It's right now $30 a month, $300 for the year. And like I said, in February alone, you can ask anyone in the discord. I made over $50,000. I paid for decades and decades and decades of this service in one month alone. And I think in the first month, you're going to pay for an entire year. At least that's how things have historically been trending. So figure it out. You have about two hours and 19 minutes. Five things. No, hang on. Ooh, ooh. We are way behind. Bullish or bearish? Someone right now, we're going to be we're running. We're bullish or bearish? Rumble, go. Rumble, go. Rumble, right now. Bullish or bearish? You guys, someone's got to comment it and you got to do it quick. You got to do it quick. You got to do it. Folks, we're running out of time. Bull, bull, bull. Okay, I see the first two comments on both are bull and bull. We got to know the sizing. First one's always for YouTube right now. All right, YouTube is going for five bullish. Rumble is also going for five bullish. All right, all right, all right, all right. Edit. Order quantity five profit. Okay. Uh, we are going for five order profit 10. Okay. All right. 510. Good. 510. Good. All right. We are ready. Whew. That could have been bad, team. That could have been bad. We are firing in five, four, three. Two, one. All right, let's see. You have YouTube on the left. You have Rumble on the right. This is day four of the training competition. This is training comp. Oh, you guys destroyed it. You guys absolutely destroyed it. Well, massive congratulations. Massive congratulations. Let's see how it, let's see how it went. Um, so YouTube ended up making 235 and Rumble ended up making 230. So count 131. Let me write this down. 
How much did you two make? 235 on the day. 235. 230. Uh-oh. Uh, problem. We have a problem, Tonto. A robot's firing that should not be firing right now. All right, let me get out of this. We have a problem, Houston. What is going on? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, wait. No, it's close. Okay, hang on. I don't know what just happened there, but it something took another trade that it shouldn't have. And I'm a little bit scared to ask at this point what happened. So it's just going to be what it's going to be. Um, all I can tell you is out of the 20 accounts, uh, this account right here highlighted 131 is YouTube's extending its lead by $5, locking in 235 on day four of the trading competition. 132 is Rumbles, locking in 230. So both accounts have gone four for four, but R YouTube's is trading at 730, while Rumbles is at 638. So both accounts have gone four for four, but YouTube's is in the lead. Want to clarify that. And now I'm very confused. Orbo is being led by 119. Folks, I messed something up. But what I didn't, I don't think I had, we're having breakouts galore. What's happening in the market? What's happening? I'm, oh, brother. Oh, brother. I think the Q's just hit a new all, did the Q's hit a new all time high? Is that what that alert was for? No, close or the spy is close spy all-time high is 5 10 13 about 75 cents away where we are now the Q's just hit a new all-time high Q's just hit a new all-time high what an opening what an opening brother amd looking real good i see some people talking about amd uh, i see some people talking about dell as well which i believe just had their earnings. Bitcoin trading at 62.3K. I do have some stories and updates related to Bitcoin. We're going to be going over that in a second. The only thing I need to really figure out here is 119. Uh, something got messed up and I don't think 119. Okay, 119. Where does this say 119? 119, I need to add to this today. 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116. All right. We do have one more trade to try to get all of these other ones. So right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So we have to get 12 more accounts and then we're going to get, hopefully this all works. We'll see. Time will tell. Hopefully the robot does well on this. Uh, but trading day four of the trading competition. Congrats to you guys. Uh, obviously particular congrats to the YouTube chat because you guys have extended your league undoubtedly, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. So quick review, quick review, bull, bull, five, five. What was it yesterday? Wasn't it like seven or six? I forget it. But this competition started on February 27th. Uh, YouTube went bullish. Rumble went bearish. Rumble hit it faster, but they ended up both hitting. And after that day, Rumble, or excuse me, YouTube traded one more contract. So it was up 180 versus 125. The very next day, YouTube was bullish again. Rumble was bearish. Once again, Rumble hit faster, but YouTube gained 195 while Rumble gained 165. Then yesterday, the 29th, YouTube and Rumble were both bullish. Uh, YouTube extended its gain by $10, 180 versus 170. And then today, both went bullish and uh, YouTube extended its gain even more by five dollars 235 versus 230 so that was day four of the trading competition it is a race to 2600 um if you're wondering why it's a race to 2600 that's the minimum you need in your account to be able to take money out of all this like apex trading all the sim to funded trading stuff but if you want to try it out yourself it's in the description of the video so four days down we have the past two days both chats have agreed the first two days chats disagreed rumble bins has been faster but YouTube has secured more money all four days thus far. I feel like we're starting our own F1 season here between it on trading competition number two. So that's the update of where all the trading competitions at. Uh, congrats to both groups, but YouTube 
you, you can feel good about yourself after this one. You can feel good about yourself. Why do I feel like this is rigged? You can't, you rumble chat. You can't be salty losers. First of all, you're only a week in. No one likes big crybabies right now. Like you're a week in. And then also you guys won the first trading competition. We have a bunch of sore losers in this chat. Sore losers. Even, even when Rumble was beating YouTube, everyone in YouTube was crying. You guys just be better. How about that? How about instead of whining about it, you just get better at your predictions and you'll have more money. How about that one? Is that crazy suggestion right there? All right. Uh, coin not having the best morning. You guys are saying Dell is up? Good earnings. Up 31%. Trading at 124, closing out yesterday at like 94. So Dell having their earnings, obviously uh, the market reacting to it very, very, very well. Ooh, missed call. Ooh, missed call. Um, how's Palantir doing? All right, all right, all right, all right. So what do I need to do today? We need one more robot needs to fire off. Palantir looks like it wants to break out. I have no Palantir position. I wish I did. I wish I got in at any of these nice dips. It just honestly kind of escaped my mind. But Palantir, nice push, pullback, nice consolidation. The follow through. The golden question is: is how good is the follow through actually gonna be? Uh, we will find out. We will find out. We will find out. We will find out. Uh, the Apex stuff, it's all right here. Right now, they are running an 80% off deal and a one-day pass valuation. It And this is like, so I'm trading on Ninja Trader, but I'm using these. That's why they all say Apex. Like, I'm not rich enough to put $50,000 into 20 accounts. That's a million dollars. I don't have a million dollars. I spent all my money on clothes, folks. You think I'm, I'm flush a million? That's crazy. No, I'm using someone else's money. And the money that I'm using is coming from Apex. The way this works is you pass a test, like you take a test, if you pass it, then you could trade for real money. That's what PA means. It means you're trading for real money. And if you do well enough, you could actually take that money out. You The first $25,000 per account is yours. And then after that, it's a 90-10 split. Right now to take the test, it's like $30 if you wanna take it. If you fail it, you could take it again. If you pass it, then you convert to PA. And then if you are converted to PA, and if you do well enough, you can actually take money out. And to first take money out, you need to get to 2,600 in profit. So it needs to say 52,600, i.e. that's why the race is to 2,600, um, just so everyone knows. That's what, that's what the deal is. All right, you have two hours and 14 minutes to sign up. Prices are going up at 11 a.m. today. Dell had a good push, but kind of getting walked down right now. How's everything else looking? TLT, bonds taking a bit of a hit. Oh, okay. Yields picking up. The dollar picking up? What? Oil's picking up too. Oil's, oil, breakout alert on oil, folks. Oil breaking above this ceiling that we had back in November, uh, kind of mid-November, end of November. Oil poking its head up right now. Here's your official, hey, pay attention to oil alert because something's going on there. Uh, spy within spitting distance of a new all-time high. The Q's just hit a new all-time high. So the intraday high right now is a new high that Nasdaq's never seen before. Bitcoin just below 62,000. Coinbase not holding 200. NVIDIA picking up, holding 800. Netflix picking up. Don't forget, there is a fundamental update on Netflix. There is a bunch of rumors, the old rumor mill, that they are raising their monthly costs once again. Obviously, the stock market liking it. Meta, I mean, I've been calling this out time and time again. This is nice range, push into the upside. I was saying a close and hold above 488. Look for this thing to pop to 500, going to 500 right now. Microsoft, maybe uh, open range breakout, maybe needs to get above 416 and then obviously take out 421. Microsoft putting in some higher lows, liking the structure there. Tesla, I guess not wanting to get the gap filled today. Rum, uh, nice push coming down. I'm looking for this downward trend to break and push up there. Speaking of that, let's give you guys the rumble numbers uh for anyone paying attention to that potential short squeeze let's see if ortex loads for us today all right all right all right all right all right all right shorts 
All right, newest numbers for Ortex. Uh, short interest staying the same, 17.82. Cost of borrow dropping ever so slightly to 50.4%. Utilization, 95.7. So the max value there is 100. And cost of borrow coming down ever since this crazy top at one almost 40. And short interest just going flat at 17.8. So not really going up, not really going down. Things are going flat in terms of the bets against old rumble. Old rumble, old rumble, old rumble. All right, the market getting hit out of the gate. Let's see what's going on with options. Do we just have profit takers on Friday? Was it just... So, yeah, options were holding. And then right here, you can see at 9.35, just a dump. Uh, and now going sideways again. Kiki Kong becoming an astronaut. Shout out. Shout out, shout out. 11 a.m. is in an hour and 20 minutes. That's a good point. Is this wrong? What time zone does it think I'm in? Do you have an hour less? Countdown timer. Time calculator. Yeah, you guys actually have a whole hour less than this. That's a good point. What time is it? Time zone. Um, why can't, can I switch it? Countdown timer. Why is it wrong? 11 a.m. Good call out. You guys have a whole less hour. Let's see if this timer works. Yep. All right. Here we go. Friday, March 1st, 2024. 11 a.m. Hour 17th. That's a great catch. That is a great, great catch. So you guys have less time than I even thought. Oh, why would they de who defaults to central time? That's crazy. That's a crazy suggestion. You know, I just signed up for the discord sloppy Bob baby, baby, baby. That's a good name. That's a, that is a, a good, good name. Dixie Normus. Um, not only that, but thank you for the shout out. Thank you for the 11 a.m. timing issue. All right. Market popped, came down a little bit. Options probably coming back in a little bit of a pop there. I want to see a new high on everything today. I want the Q's already hit a new all-time high. I want to see the SPY pop. The magic line in the sand for the SPY for any of you kind of waiting for that is 5, 10, 13, about a dollar away. You can practically taste it. You can practically smell it. We're right there. You know? You know, you know, you know? What time is it? What time? 9.43. Okay, what? when are the bots going to run? I can't believe I didn't turn that one bot on. That makes me feel kind of stupid. Feels like we're getting into a high-risk situation. Oh, I suppose it is what it is. Sometimes it's going to be the way it's going to be. What's moving right now? On an intraday basis, what's having some crazy, crazy volatility that you guys want me to have up here? Is it Meta? Meta's having a good day. Microsoft's having a good day. Tesla's not having a good day. Netflix, all right. NVIDIA got hit, bouncing back. Uh, how about AMD? AMD had a great day yesterday. Breakout alert on AMD. Uh, what, what's, what do you, help me help you. Help me help you. KRE, the small banking sector. Mm -mm. Trex, always a big fan. Meta is looking good. We're about to tag 500. I can't even disagree on that. We got some crazy volatility going on in Bitcoin right now. It, it got dumped from 62.4K down to about $1,000 out of nowhere. Let's see if this dip is bought. Have you looked at Kava? Uh, we looked at it right after its earnings, which was two days ago, I want to say. When was it Kava? It's not even on this, but yeah, it just had its earnings. I'm not going to chase it up here. It's looking good. If I was in it, I would hold it still, uh, but I'm not going to chase it at a relative high, at an all-time high. Buying at an all-time high is a little bit stupid, so probably don't do that. NYCE? That's not right. You mean... You're talking about the New York whatever bank. It's not NYCE. Is it CE? No. What is it? 
NYC B, this is the one that uh, it's getting destroyed. I don't think this bank survives. Um, they got caught up in the whole banking crisis, what, earlier, well, about a year ago now. Uh, and now some of their numbers are coming out of how it's falling apart. They're getting murked, absolutely murked. It's not NYCB, it's NYCE. E, E, NYCE. B, B, E, C, D. Can I buy a value? Can I, can I buy a vowel? New York Community Bank Corp. NYCB getting murked. Doesn't look to be a good situation. I actually think it's a trending. Yeah, right here. NYCB tumbles 26% after identifying loan oversight weakness. Not good. Not, not good. All right. Where are we at? Um, Q's trying to hold SPY a little bit weaker. What is weak? Energy should be popping. It's up. Okay, I thought it'd be up more, but energy's looking decent. Financials took a bit of a hit. Pay attention to XLF, the overall financial sector. Maybe pay attention to the smaller banks, KRE, getting murked this morning. Remember about a year ago when all these smaller banks started to fail? KRE went absolutely haywire. This is the ETF for smaller regional banks, so watch a definitely pay attention to this etf today um probably why bonds are taking a bit of a hit not the best situation there might be a fire sale of bonds in some of these regional banks to protect themselves and that's why we're seeing bonds go down um hmm. all right let's check out some of these other ones xlk xlk this is the tech sector looking fine utilities looking weak industrials weak healthcare bouncing back a little bit uh so energy is the good one today tech might pop up and be good but financials are looking a little bit suspect and if i had to guess it's probably because of the regional banking crisis is there a regional banking crisis how are tulips looking oh they always look great you know tulips tulips are always looking always money in the tulip stand if you guys know what i mean always always money in the tulip stand we'll put kre right there rums break even meta i kind of want to watch that might hit 500 solana is looking good 132 eth is looking good eth tagging 3400 we already looked at dell it gapped up but it looks like shit right now what's exciting about that at this moment uh riot bouncing a little bit right and mara are going to be highly correlated highly correlated with uh bitcoin itself but not it's not going to be the best correlation it's not going to be like a perfect one correlation uh because uh-oh things are diving a little bit team uh spy just hit a new intraday low but the queue saved themselves to the tune of we almost did maybe people are going to buy it maybe they're gonna buy it up we don't have a gap fill or anything like that today interesting definitely a little bit of scaredy pants this morning who knows maybe it's some big people locking in their gains from february maybe we have a little bit of rebalancing but as of now people are buying this dip lots of time left in the game today lots of movement solana 132 oil Let's see if that can break and hold 80. Tesla, not looking the best. Microsoft taking a slight hit. Meta's ripping. Meta's about to tag 500. 30 cents away. 32, 20. Meta in spitting distance of 500. <coughs> my apologies. I just refuse to take my allergy medicine. And I also refuse to stop playing with Piper whenever I get the opportunity to do so correlation sucked this week no it didn't it was still highly correlated mara took an extra hit because of the business development that they're doing a shelf offering i want to say um so but beyond that the price is correlated but yeah this i don't know i think too many people are getting tricked into wanting to trade raya riot and mara thinking it is bitcoin and it's correlated with bitcoin but there's a a lot of other things you need to consider, mainly all the business decisions, the inter-business competition. There's so, not only are you picking the direction of Bitcoin, 
but you're also saying that the other business related things are going to align with Bitcoin's movement. I really, I think too many people are getting burned on Riot and Mara when they really are just betting on Bitcoin. If you're betting on Bitcoin, there's Bitcoin itself. There's leveraged Bitcoin. There's Bitcoin futures. There's Bitcoin spot ETFs. What else? There's Bitcoin futures ETFs. There, if you are playing Riot and Mara because of Bitcoin, just go play Bitcoin. You can get it in a highly leveraged. If that's your argument, you're like, oh, no, no, no. Riot and Mara are super leveraged. And I like that because of options. You you can go do options on that stuff. Like it, there's many, many related asset classes directly following Bitcoin that you could leverage. Like it's not just like a one thing. There's various things you could do. Reddit should, uh, Rumble should acquire Reddit. I don't think that would be like financially possible. Isn't Reddit tr attempting to IPO at like multiple billion dollars? Uh, Reddit IPO valuation. What's its overall valuation? Does anyone know off the top of their head? Post valuation of $10 billion? $10 billion? No, that financially, that would be impossible right now. Matt, you're missing the point that the returns are higher with select miners. Take a look at CLSA. Okay, I have them at 389. Compared to what? You can take you can trade leverage crypto via ETFs, via derivatives, via it goes up futures. Uh I'm trust me, not missing it. I'm not missing it at all. You if the point is percentage return, you don't have to take on the extra risk of the interbusiness competition. If you're like, no, 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 I'm betting on Bitcoin and I want higher return, you can do that directly with Bitcoin in a leveraged manner to mimic the same percentage return without taking on the risk of an interbusiness competition. Uh, trust me, not missing anything on this. You can, if your focus is percentage return and you want to bet on Bitcoin and you want it to mimic the returns of these miners, you could do that to a higher degree and still not take on the business risk of some miners failing. So compare the returns of the select time frame of your leverage return plays to CLSK. Let's see. What, what do you, you, you can leverage it higher or lower. That question does not make sense. So compare the returns of a select time frame with one. Okay. Leverage it by a hundred. I don't know. Am I allowed to pick the number? You realize you can change how much it's leveraged, right? All right. I multiply it by a hundred. I'm, I multiply it by a thousand. Am I allowed to just pick a number? Is that what you're at? I don't know. A, a million. There. Done. Did it. What's Bitcoin up? 30%? Okay. 30 times a million leverage. 30 million. There. Gave you some returns. It's, I don't know. I. There is no reason to play Bitcoin miners and you, unless you like that specific business. If you are playing a Bitcoin miner because of Bitcoin and your thesis on Bitcoin, you are missing what's going on. I don't have any issue with anyone playing a Bitcoin miner if you like that specific business. Some of these businesses do will do well. Some of them are going to horribly fail. You should definitely, definitely, definitely only be in the miners if you like that miners business. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. I'm not necessarily against them. I'm against the idea of playing a miner if you're doing it exclusively because of Bitcoin. That It doesn't make sense. That's not how leverage works. Uh, you can easily go leverage it by 200x right now. There are so many services that are willing to allow you to leverage your Bitcoin investment 200x. Uh, I can name five off the top of my head. They've, I mean, obviously with the popularity of Bitcoin right now, it's, it's the hot new thing. You, you could easily get 200 X leverage easily. Uh, edit DWAC merger at risk with new BS trial to come. Um, 
Yeah, we just talked about that of how it's getting sued because of a minority stake owner saying that they Trump is like diluting them unjustly or illegally or something like that. Unjustly, illegally, something in that realm. All right, Meta did tag 500. Shout out to Trex for, I guess, loving Meta because it is working out. What a rebound Meta has made. What a freaking rebound. Look at this. 384 down to 87 back up to 500. What a Nike swoosh. Just rip, pause, rip again. Huge gap, ripper. That's crazy. What a come. Who knew that firing so many people would just push your stock to new heights? That's that's the big business trick you learn at like, I don't know, when you're getting your MBA at Wharton or Harvard or Stanford or MIT. If you ever need your business to go up, just start firing everyone. I tried that for my business, for my content business. Didn't work. Uh, I guess you can only do it at scale, but yeah. We, we used to have 30, 40, 50 people, and I fired them all. I said, get out of here. We need to push the stock even higher because I was just looking at all these other tech companies doing it, and I view myself like my own entity to be a tech business, obviously. And it, it, it didn't go the way I thought it would. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It worked for them. Did not work for me, unfortunately. Did not work for me. All right. If KRE can bounce here, there might be a little bit of relief, but KRE hemorrhaging. These regional banks hemorrhaging right now. Bitcoin holding roughly 62 coin coming back to 202 bouncing back above so this might just be that morning flush out and then hopefully we see a nice pop i want to see the spy hit a new all-time high today just to i don't know something to celebrate at the old texas roadhouse tonight obviously the net delta going down throughout the day uh large smack there at 955 but let's see if there's a bit of a pop a bit of a pop. You have an hour and 12 minutes to figure this out. You have an hour and 12 minutes to figure out how to hit a link and how to hit the subscribe monthly button after the code Goonies applied. This is going to take a half second to load. Don't be Speedy Gonzalez here. You don't need to be faster than the Roadrunner. You don't have to be Yunsein Bolt. You can wait a second, make sure the code is applied, then hit this button. And in an hour, 12 minutes, exactly, the price is going up from 30 month to 50 month. The first month is free. So if you want to get in on a free month, grandfather it into the cheaper price, you have an hour and 12 minutes. It should be two minutes. Is this the worst timer ever? Did anyone notice this time? Like what? This is, this is wrong. Am I losing my mind? What whatsoever? Like, does this thing not understand the linear nature? It's awkwardly off by 10 minutes. All right, we're just going to have to do our own timer. Let's see. That's the only way we could really do this. One hour timer. Timer. All right. We're rocking it. No one caught the fact that that thing was double, doubly wrong. Not only time zone, but then it was awkwardly off by like 10 minutes. Um, so this is your time right here. Uh, spy bouncing. Okadokes. Okadokes. Five minute potentially saving itself. 10 minute potentially saving itself. 30 minute got murked by the Eurozone CPI report. Bouncing back. Daily's been bullish. Let's load up load up the tech sector how's this one doing five minute bullish 10 minute bullish 30 minute bullish daily looking bueno um so yeah we got a little bit rocked this morning but if the financial sector can turn i think the whole market turns and i think we see a new all-time high today um and this is the subset of the financial sector i'm paying attention to the regional banking sector obviously a subsector of the overall financial sector getting hit because of the whole new york whatever bank corp and basically that company is gonna die uh it doesn't seem like it has a high odds of survival at this moment in time but tech's looking good and energy's looking good tech's looking good energy's looking good so let's see how whoa there brother 10 10 a.m re... we're going we're cooking with we're cooking with Christo now. 
We're cooking on that pop. Wait, shouldn't this have traded? Hello? Mom? Why did my robot not do what I pay it to do? The amount of money I pay this robot. Now what's happening? Now what's ha Now what's what in the what in tarnation? Now I'm just scared to ask, honestly. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Folks, I don't get it. This is this is so far above my pay grade, it's not even funny. Don't ask me what's going on. Look at me. I'm a guy that can't even decide what shirt to wear, so I'm wearing two different shirts put together. I'm not a guy who knows. And now this is... Did it, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> made money. Don't know what happened. Didn't fire at the right time, but it made money. Uh, so that is obviously the conclusion of the week. But five days in a row that every account has made money. So obviously it's always a good day to be the best trader on this side of the Mississippi. So that's pretty sick. Um, so we're going to close that down because that's a lot of money. And we're going to move on with our life. Do I know what happened? No, don't, don't ask me. Because I, I don't know what happened. Matt, can you discuss Intel Outlook? Like long-term fundamental outlook? No idea. I'm not, I'm not the guy for long-term. I'm not Warren Buffett. Um, long-term fundamental, I guess, breakdowns and analysis. I don't think there's anything in Wall Street that's more boring to me. I live... I mean, you have to understand... If you're asking me about a long-term fundamental outlook on a company, you're talking to a kid who's watched every Fast and Furious movie out there. Even Tokyo Drift, the one that sucks. I live life a quarter of a mile at a time. The chance of me getting my long-term investment account is slim to none. I don't take care of myself. I have various physical and psychological issues. A long-term account, you're talking about funny money to me. It's not a thing I'm ever going to benefit. I mean, if you want to know about my long-term account, go talk to my fiance. Go talk to my future kids. They're the ones that it matters, not for me. Tokyo Drift was the best. Shut up. Tokyo Drift is the best one? You guys are dumb. Did you Do you have eyeballs? For it? Tokyo Drift? is the best oh wow i didn't know i was talking to people from loserville this morning oh, oh did you watch it at the movie theater in loserville with all your loser friends because it's such a shitty movie tokyo drift is the best you shouldn't be doing drugs at 10 in the morning 10 in the morning you're doing drugs already that's so messed up at least wait till lunchtime Jesus, you guys have problems. Like, you guys have serious problems. Is the best. Dude, I'm going to be thinking about this all weekend. You guys got me spun up. Those comments are going to be playing through my mind legitimately all weekend. No one on this planet thinks Tokyo Drift is the best installment of the Fast and Furious trilogy. No, not even a trilogy. What, what What do you even... What's the trilogy equivalent word for 10? There has to be a fancy Latin word for it. I'm just going to call it masterpiece, really, because that's what it is. Tokyo Drift was really the best? Saga. Is there a special word for 10, though? Like, where... Uh, Dode... <laughs> Monica! Oh, shut up. I don't even want you guys in the Discord if you're going to act like this. You're just trying to piss me off. Honestly, if you think Tokyo Drift is the best Fast and Furious, I'm actually kindly asking you to not join the Discord. I wouldn't want someone who is so blind to any appreciation of high-quality art to be benefiting off of my teachings. I, so, like, obviously, I'm... I don't like when I have to walk back, but earlier when I was like, oh, join up, everyone's welcome. 
that's not true. Not everyone's welcome. I would kindly ask, just have some respect. Don't join. I like just someone else. It's just, we, dude, you, you guys, you just don't appreciate art. I, I just can't. I don't want people to benefit off my teachings if they cannot appreciate art. My Tokyo, my <laughs> Discord username is Tokyo Drift. If it is, I'm banning you. I will kick and ban every single person who has a Tokyo Drift related name. It, you can, you guys can shame me all you want. You can do, you can do whatever you want. But you're not going to last. You're going to get the guillotine so incredibly quick. Test me. It's, you're not getting it. I'm not teaching you. It's not It's not going to happen. Over my dead body. Over my Tokyo Drift. I didn't. Honestly, I said that. And I thought it would be received to a similar degree if I said the sun's hot. You know? Oh, yeah. No, we could agree. The sun is hot. I, in a million, million, million years, never thought there would be, like, this would become what it is right now. I would have bet my entire life's net worth of $69 that everyone would be like, yeah, no, that makes sense. Like, it, it's widely known that Tokyo Drift sucks. Like, you guys are, you're just trying to piss me off. You're just trying to get under my, you're trying to ruin my Friday, which is messed up because you guys know Friday is my Texas Roadhouse day. And it's just not. That's not cool, guys. Not not cool. Not cool, you know? Are we really sure that the sun is hot? All right, valid question. Valid question. All right. We have an uprange day. Uprange day. Hang on. I got to got to do some deep analysis. Deep analysis. All right, for those of you in the Discord who signed up in time, uh, what is this? March 1st. I'm putting in the Piper strategy right now. And it is up. It is up. It is up. It is up. Oops. Typo. Today's March 1st. Signal. Strength. Strikes. In. It's locked in. It's locked in. Tokyo Drift is better than Texas Roadhouse. Oh. I didn't know we had crazy people in here today. Like legitimately insane people in here. But I, uh, I guess. What else? What else should I expect? You know? actual crazies oh brother oh brother oh brother oh brother this is my life now just talking to crazy people all freaking day all day it just is what it is all right All right, let's see if I can fire off a trade. Ooh, my trade got accepted. I'm in the mainframe. They've put me into the mainframe. All right, if you're in the Discord here, I'm loading up my trade. Let me just take a screenshot of it. Don't have the time to type it, obviously. All right, we're firing this one off. Firing off a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, no, don't. Someone just commented. Hang on. All right, that's in there. Sorry, my screenshot got messed up. All right, we're doing that. We're doing that. We're doing this. We're doing that. What was mine? Uh... -huh. 
All right. It's all in there. The signal's in there. My trade's in there. Everyone who's in the Discord, you can just see everything that happened. All right. That's done. Ooh, new mentions. New mentions? New mentions? All right. Cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. Cool beans. Market's taken off. Spy within... Did it, is that technically a new all-time high? At 510.20? It did. Nope. It did barely make a new all-time high. So the previous high was 510.13. We hit 510.21. So it made a new high to the tune of $0.08. Cents. Uh, that's exciting. So new high in the SPY. New high in the Qs. Congratulations. 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 If you've been playing it. And if you haven't been playing it, you probably think that Tokyo Drift is the best Fast and Furious Saga installment. And you're wrong and silly and from Loserville. So I don't know what you want me to think about it. Uh, uh, fast and Furious. Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift main character. They, you guys were tricked into thinking this guy was a teenager. A t you guys from Loserville's and gals, I don't want to be sexist, think that you were tricked into thinking this is a teenager. You're like, oh, yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, no, 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 this kid's 17, 18, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, no, 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 he's, he's totally 17, 18. Yep, that's what a 17 and an 18-year-old looks like. That's what a teenager looks like for sure. You guys, 100%, this is just a teen. A very normal, run-of-the-mill teen. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, yeah, you guys are so right. It, yeah, it was, it was the best one. Oh, yeah, you, you guys are right. Yeah, good luck, good luck. Starting to realize where all the short bus riders are. <laughs> He's so old. He just did a lot of meth. Oh, Jesus. Matt, you are a teen. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the fact that you folks have been bamboozled into thinking a geriatric was a teen. Fed speak going down meow. Uh, yes, I think there was a couple Fed speakers today. I think there was a couple Fed speakers. I have it. I have it. Shout out to Anna's art. All right. All right, all right, all right. 1015, Fed Governor Chris Waller is speaking. 1015, Dallas Fed President Lori Logan speaks. 1215, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic speaks. 130, San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly speaks. 330, Fed Governor Adriana Kugler? Kugler? Kug Kugler. Um, that's at 330. So you have... One, two, three, four, five, maybe even six, five and a half Fed members to still survive today in your trading. He identified as a teen. <laughs> I bet he did. I bet he did. See, look at this. As soon as financials bounce today, this was the big worry of the day, but we are cruising. We are cruising. We are cruising. You only have 44 minutes left of me hardcore shilling the discord until i decide to raise prices again you can get your first month for free make sure the code goonie is applied if it's not applied the first month's not going to be free yes if i'm feeling like a nice guy i'll do the refund anyway or you could just completely avoid my emotional state and make sure it's applied when you check out it's pinned to the top of chat it's in the description of the video. Prices are going from 30 a month to 50 a month as soon as 11 a.m. hits today. So if you want your first month free, you're grandfathered into the cheaper price, which means you have one entire month to decide if you like it or not. Are you going to like it? I think so. The people in the Discord are pretty cool. They're doing pretty well. Uh, Piper's been crushing it. My trades have been crushing it. The lectures have been crushing it. The newsletter has been crushing it. It's If you're looking for a place of like, oh, I have a gut feeling about Tesla today that this is not for you in, in a very like serious mode. What we do in here is more of a mathematical dive into the market's conditional probabilities, uh, Bayesian probabilities. 
if we are in situation XYZ, what are the odds of ABC playing out? It is very math focused. It is very stats focused. It is not this like gut feeling of fucking dead. We're, we're ripping it, brother. Uh, because that's not how you make money consistently. The whole point of this is consistently making money. And we are using math, stats, facts, figures, Bayesian probabilities, conditional probabilities to do so. Now, if you think, does it work? Does it not work? This month alone, I made $50,000. I made $50,000. The account this, oh, I mean, I'll just tell you. I'll tell, oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now to your face. I'm not from, I'm not from Loserville. You're from Loserville. Uh, the account year to date, year to date is up 153%, also known as $54,315 realized. 153% return in eight weeks of trading, 54,000.3, 54.3K. Um, so does it work? I mean, I think my own account, and you see it in the free newsletters and everything of when I blast those emails out to you, you see the daily, just daily adds up, adds up, adds up. You're the mayo then, Matt. Oh, mayor. I think the way I interpret it was more funny. You're the mayo. I think that's what, like people see me on the street all the time. They're like, yo, Mayo, Matt, there's that bag, that thick bag of Mayo. Um, so that's where I thought you were going with it, but you just called me mayor. Wait, you're calling me mayor of Loserville? Well, that's not so nice. How do you get the newsletter? Pin to the top of chat. Um, sorry, I thought you were being funny. Then I thought you were just telling me a mayor. And then I realized what you were calling me the mayor of. So it went from like really funny to like, ah, whatever, to like actually particularly negative saying that I'm the mayor of Loserville. I didn't, I didn't even apply to run. So like, how could I be mayor? You're, no, you're, you're the mayor of Loserville. Loser? I'm, I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you time for your daily bitcoin digital gold the internet money that your grandparents don't understand the thing that is making you feel like maybe you could make it on wall street time for your daily bitcoin update i got some really good news breaking records. Something just happened in the world of Wall Street, Bitcoin, and Wall Street's appetite for Bitcoin that we have never seen before. So there's the good news. We got some bad news. And then there's also a little bit of a bonus I want to throw in. Basically, a highfalutin wannabe dude on Wall Street who thought he knew everything. Basically, always a negative Nancy on Bitcoin. Well, because Bitcoin's rocking so much, he actually got fired so a little bit of drama at the end uh but before we get into the really good news the record-breaking metrics of bitcoin itself let's start off with some of the negative news there is a statistical chance in the short term based on technicals that there might be a bit of a pullback now before i get into it i don't want to be a negative nancy i don't want to cause anyone to panic is this going to happen i don't know i don't have a crystal ball i just want to share what's going on bitcoin bulls just joining the rally are very late to the party according to an analyst and i actually found a whole nother negative nancy analyst too so let's get the bad news out of the way but first bitcoin as i'm filming this just below sixty-two thousand per coin and the market cap is 1.2 trilly if you look at the daily chart it's rippity skippity doodah i mean year to date up 48 percent past week 22 percent past year 165 percent so yeah it's looking pretty freaking good. So why are there people who are not the most bullish right now? Well, they're basically just saying it's overbought. Bitcoin's RSI, Relative Strength Index, one of the most popular technical indicators in the world of trading, signals caution to short-term traders looking to chase the price rally. The overbought reading on the RSI signals that potential for a temporary price correction. Obviously, the operative word there being potential. No one has a functioning crystal ball when it comes to the market. Bitcoin, the leading cryptocurrency by market value, has gained over 40% in four weeks and is trading just 12% short of its record high at 69,000 LOL. Such an uber bullish market condition often has a short-term traders and speculators who miss the early rally jump in with both feet using riskier leverage products like futures to maximize gains and make up for the initially sitting on the sidelines. Remember, in real life, it's cool to be late to the party. 
You want to be that guy walking up at night. For some reason, you have sunglasses on. You're in a leather jacket, potentially even as cool as wearing ashless chaps. Yeah, I get it. That's the cool guy. When it comes to the market, yes, you can adorn such a similar costume, but just don't be late. If anything, it pays to be a little bit early, and really it pays the most to be exactly on time. The market's a very punctual, punctual beast, so what's cool in real life, not necessarily cool in the market. Please remember that. If you are one of those short-term traders, you might want to consider new information which suggests chasing the rally now may be risky. Bitcoin's 14-day RSI is at 88, which means it's very high. Max value is 100. We have not seen an RSI this overbought and Bitcoin trading at these absolute levels ever. Chasing it here looks like a very late trade. So what does this say? It's not really a negative, Nancy. It's just saying maybe just wait. Wait for a bit of a pullback so you inherently take on less risk. I don't think that's the worst advice for me. I like the concept of dollar cost averaging, long-term investor. But if you're more of an active trader and you're trying to time it, I don't think chasing is necessarily the thing to do. With that being said, there are still a couple more negative Nancys. Matrixport co-founder warns of market euphoria correction after Bitcoin's 60K milestone. The blockchain financial service firm argued in January that a spot Bitcoin ETF may not be approved by the US SEC. So they're already wrong. They're 0 for 1 this year. And for whatever's going on, they say they love Bitcoin, but they're always so hyper pessimistic about it. I'm like, no, 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 the SEC is not going to not going to do this at all. And then guess what? It happened. So here they're saying that there's going to be a correction. But like I said, they're already 0 for 1 this year. I don't know if they're necessarily going to be turning it around. Daniel Yan, I believe is how you say it, co-founder of the Singaporean crypto services firm Matrix Ports. <laughs> did, did you guys hear that? I'm sorry if you, I, I don't know. If you guys have like really good headphones, you might've heard me just sneeze. So my apologies, but most people probably didn't even, probably didn't even notice that. So sorry. Daniel Yan, co-founder of the Singaporean crypto services firm Matrix Port, believes a market correction is imminent, imminent, following Bitcoin reaching its highest price since 2021. The sentiment of the market has come to a level where I think we should be cautious. I think we should see another healthy 15% correction by end of April. Uh, I don't agree with that because I think that's when the halving is. So I think there's going to be quite a bit of hype going into it. It might be a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. So if he's talking like right after that, I could see it. But that doesn't mean it's a 15 point correction from here. We could go higher and it could be a correction from that point, which means we still might be higher than the current levels, if that makes sense. Jan pointed, said that last month, uh, Jan said that the month of March is a tricky one for macroeconomic perspective, uh, pointing to examples such as the U.S. Fed's upcoming meeting, the Bitcoin having and Ethereum's Denkun upgrade, the co-founder stated. From where? 65 or 60K or now? I really don't know. I don't even know which comes sooner, a new all-time high in Bitcoin or the correction. Again, you don't have to bother too much on this if you are a long-term holder. For those who are tempted to trade the short-term moves, watch March. So basically, he's saying it might go up or it might go down, and he's pretty confident it's either up, down, or sideways, and you should be cautious. Um, hard to disagree, honestly. It, it, it's kind of hard to disagree with that take. So anyway, there's a little bit of the negativity. I want the bad news out of the way. Let's get into the good news. Let's get into the record-breaking Bitcoin news. Breaking. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, IBIT, hits a record 10 billion dollars in assets under management. This is the fastest an ETF has hit 10 billion in assets under management at 37 trading days. That's the record right there. This is really descriptive of the fact of how much appetite Wall Street as a whole has for Bitcoin. We are breaking records, breaking records, breaking records because Wall Street wants in and they're not doing it because they're dummies. Just 4% of all ETFs has reached 10 billion mark. More history made by Bitcoin. More detail, IBIT, the newest member of the $10 billion club, fastest ever to get there. Only 152 ETFs in this club out of 3,400, including GBTC. First 10 billion so touched because so much has come from flows. In IBIT's case, 78% of assets under management is flows. Second 10 billion easier because market appreciation, bigger variable. So... As they always say, your first 10 billion is your hardest. But this, look at this. Look at the graph, bottom left, top right. It explains why there's so much fervor 
in the world of Bitcoin. And then for those of you who are just a little bit more curious about the flows, this is from January 28th till now. Uh, the most recent day hasn't uploaded yet, but you could just see this rippity skippity doodah massive, massive appetite to the point that it's breaking. It's literally the record holder of inflows, the assets under management. You have not seen this attraction so quickly ever before. Lastly, drama, 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 drama. If you didn't understand what was happening for Bitcoin and you have a very important position within the world of the financial industry, if you're this wrong, you get fired. And that's just what happened. Breaking Vanguard CEO, Tim Buckley, uh, same vibe as JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon of like, no, I don't get Bitcoin. Get rid of Bitcoin. Doesn't make sense to me. It's only for crime. He, Tim was the same way. Anyway, Vanguard CEO Tim Buckley to step down as CEO, Bitcoin fired him. Yeah, when you're this horribly wrong, because remember Vanguard refusing to do anything with Bitcoin, you get murked. And that's just what happened. So RIP to Tim and his job. I'm sure he'll be able to retire to millions and millions and millions of dollars. So I don't really feel that bad, bad for him. But yeah, when you're this horrifically wrong, you're going to lose your job, especially when your job is to understand that these types of things like kind of weigh the risk reward, see what's coming, read the tea leaves. When you're this wrong, you lose your job. And that's exactly what happened to Mr. Buckley here. So that's your old Bitcoin, your old digital gold, your old internet money's update. Times are good. Let's see what the next day has to bring. Speaking of that, Spy, Rippin, Q's, Rippin, KRE, Rippin, Meta 500, NVIDIA, looks like it wants to rip. I would love for a coin to rip. Uh, Bitcoin just below 62. Where's Rumble at? Rumble's green. We're seeing a lot of green today. Tesla's not green. Microsoft's not green. Everything else is very, very green. Um, very, very, very green. Uh, what do we have? Do you think RSI really matters to the most volatile speculative asset in the world? Uh, it depends the time frame. I would say. I would say larger time frames it becomes more indicative. Uh, but like in the short time frame, no. But also, Bitcoin's not the most volatile speculative asset in the world. Uh, there's a lot more volatility on the stock market even than Bitcoin. Bitcoin's volatility has calmed down quite a bit ever since the anticipation of the ETFs. And now that they are ETFs, when you have that much money on Wall Street, the volatility like really starts to come down. And that's exactly what we saw when gold got their spot ETFs back in November of 04. It commonly had 18, 20% drawdowns out of nowhere. And then once the spot ETFs came up for gold, the volatility really started to shrink. Now I'm not saying the volatility completely disappears. Of course, there's always going to be volatility, especially when we're in such a crazy monetary policy like setup. Uh, but it's it's going to be there. But I think as time passes, the volatility will continue to wane. If that's my prediction of how that's going to go. All right. Where are we at? You have 30 minutes to get in. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, I don't want you guys complaining about it. I don't want you to say, you didn't give us a heads up. I'm telling you right now, you have 30 minutes. Prices are increasing. Get your first month for free. Get grandfathered into cheaper prices. Um, I don't see the harm in testing it out. If you like it after the first month, great. Stick around. Join the party. Join the people who are making money, learning about the market, and just having a grand old time. Um, and if you don't like it after the first month, if it's not your cup of tea, if you just don't like me, which, hey, I don't blame you. I don't like me either. Uh, you could just quit and then, okay, no harm, no foul. The first month was free anyway. But this isn't one of those BS things of me not increasing it. No, at 11 a.m. today, prices are increasing. Oh, uh, it's been a year since I've eaten a single free snack here. I want a free snack. I, I want a free snack. All right. I think I had a video that I wanted to show you. Oh, what was this? I was told to react to that, but there was a Bitcoin video. Now that we're in Bitcoin mode. Go away, away. Disappear, disappear. Dis there we go. Bitcoin. The new cryptocurrency. Before we talk about how Bitcoin works, let's digress for a moment and review the state of money today. As you all know, the supply of our paper money, uh, called fiat money by economists, is controlled by a central trusted authority within each government. In the case of the U.S., the Federal Reserve controls the relative value of your money by shrinking or growing uh, the money supply as it sees fit. 
This idea often puts the U.S. at odds with other currency, uh, countries because of the U.S. currency's dual role uh, as a de facto world reserve currency. Um, recently, That's not a good uh, one. as a matter of fact, the World Economy Survey by the U.N. shocked the world by stating that a new global reserve currency needs to be created. The dollar has proved, in their opinion, not to be a stable store of value, which they believe is a requisite for a stable reserve currency. Is it possible that in the future a uh, crowdsourced, decentralized a digital currency could be the answer? Well, let's see if Bitcoin might fit the bill. So Bitcoin is almost the opposite of this fiat money, right? There's no paper, there's no central authority printing money, any computer can generate Bitcoin, uh, and any computer can store Bitcoin well, kind of, yeah, I know. I mean, I had the volume max. I don't know why it was so bad. All right, let's see if this one's any louder. A uh, POV, you're almost 30, single and dating literally anywhere. What? I just feel like as a single woman dating in general, that like, it's not too much to ask. If you like dogs and are not particularly religious, you maybe lean a certain way politically, but don't talk about it every fucking day, um, don't have a history of addiction, like your family and get along with them and don't have insane traumatic mommy issues, have a job that you do enjoy and financially stable, and then haven't cheated on any of your exes. I just feel like that's pretty basic, but I don't know, I guess not, because I have yet to meet somebody who passes all seven requirements, that's all. Same sister, dude. I just a sister in arms right there. We're just battling out on the dating field together. Except I have severe mommy issues. I just I want that on the public record, not just normal mommy issues. Like I, we all have normal mommy. I'm saying severe, like like should like should talk to someone about it. You know, the Johnson Rock Dwayne. March 24 rankings are in <laughs> the Johnson rock point. Uh, we know Elon is suing Altman. All right, cool. Is there any other breaking news? Vegan cardiologist, Dr. Joel Kahn showing that a 40 year old vegan can do it. Great job, Joe. Ah, uh, I never want to be a vegan. It feels like you're dying without being dead. Dude, this is how I work out. The inflation is killing my motivation. Bitcoiner. I'm sad that there's no volume on this because it would probably be sick. Hell yeah, dude. That's how you get around these days. That's innovative. You can travel and work out. It's a mobile gym. Genius. Oh, there we go. Some good rows. There we go. There we go. If you guys see me going through New York City like this today, don't ask questions. Just know I'm in a good spot mentally. And also, obviously, physically. Look at that guy's lats. Ooh, the old 180. The 180 into the delt raises. All right, get a couple mobile lunges in there. There we go. There we go. This is how you live likes. This is how you live life. All right. Uh, how's the market doing? Looking great. Looking phenomenal. That KRE pop really helped things out. How are my positions? I technically already hit my profit goal for today. The question is, do I take the money? Do I have the discipline to take the money when I should? How do I want to conclude the week? It's always nice to conclude the week on a win. But you always want to start a new month on a strong foot, you know? I, I guess I'm at a philosophical, psychological, Gregorian calendar-based issue. It's a Friday, so you want to lock in a winner. But it's the start of a new month, so you want to start off as strong as you possibly can. You, you see how those are conflicting goals right there? Could be problematic. Could be problematic. Uh, options Delta popped on that report at 10 a.m. and then kind of ripped all the way up till 10.30. Taking a little bit of a break right now. And what is it? Uh, some 
some calls were sold and some puts were purchased, but overall the bulls are dominant today. If you want proof, green. Green means bullish. Green means bullish. Green means bullish. Green means bullish. Let's look at the tech sector. Green means bullish. Green means bullish. Green means bullish. Green means bullish. So four different time frames, two different, I guess, really indexes. I guess these are future contracts, but they're going to be one and the same. Uh, I see bullish times eight. So I, I, I see no reason to be betting against this. There's a link to the Discord. Uh, no, a Discord. I think you might be confusing me with someone else. A dit, a dit, like like a trading Discord, where there's newsletters, private lectures on the weekend, signals backed by math, my trades, and other people's trades. N no, that. I think this is kind of awkward because I think you might be confusing me with like maybe another streamer that you watch that talks about markets. Um, but no, that sounds cool. It sounds like potentially an innovative way to teach the world of retail a new perspective of trading, active trading, especially with zero DTEs. Uh, I wish I had thought about that. But no. No, 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 no. I'm just in this like weird, weird Telegram Reddit group where we just talk about ancient alien stuff and how like they obviously built the pyramids. And right now Biden is working to cover that up because he wants like no one to know that there were aliens here thousands of years ago. Uh, but that that's about it. That's what I do after the stream. Like I pay my bills with the stream and then I use all my free time to research ancient aliens. And... Um, being getting a little bit more into the world of uh baking pies as well a little bit more into the world of baking pies it's just kind of a thing i find it relaxing i find it carthotic uh spy new all-time high cues all-time high so whatever the intraday high of today ends up being will be the all-time high for the old stonk market the old stonk market Unusual activity. I swear to God, if this is that Tokyo Drift gang, we're going to have problems. I'm going to call up my boy Vin, and we're going to literally ban that. We are going to ban Tokyo Drift from ever being played again. You know how Stalin just like erased certain things from history? Are you guys aware about that in history right around World War II? Stalin, it like truly from the record books erase people um that's what vin and i are going to be doing with anything related to tokyo drift just want just want that out there so enjoy it while you can but you're not going to get you're not going to get to enjoy it enjoy it for that much longer you are not going to get to enjoy it for that much longer just living a life a quarter mile at a time uh all right Oh, we do have some reacts to get into. Some reacts to get into. Reacts. Reacts, reacts, reacts. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. All right. Let's see what we got on this Friday, on this degenerate Friday. Return to Korea. Return of one hand dealer. What? No. How do you do that? Did you guys appreciate that? Did you guys see the smoothness in that ability? The je ne sais quoi, if you will? No. So, oh, so smooth. That's. That's a professional right there. That's a person, a pro. This is going to end poorly. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, that edit was hilarious. That was really good. Oh, I haven't seen that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> Uh, power of a haircut. <laughs> <laughs>
It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. This that hot girl by my anthem, turn it up and throw a tantrum. This that hottest drop the music every day like that. She be too thick and my friends are all annoying. But we go dumb, yeah, we go stupid. This that hot girl. It's the haircut. <laughs> Barely recognizable. Ah, uh, you guys are on one this morning. You guys found some good ones. The fucking haircut. All right, this is a show. I'm a professional. Cyber Twiger, very cool, very cool. I love you. I love you, Cyber Truck. Beautiful. Wow, wow. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So racist. It feels so racist that we watch things. Why is it so fucking funny? Ha. My face. My face. Here's why you shouldn't trust screenshots. I'm gonna show you why you shouldn't trust every screenshot you see online. So did you know if you go to this website, you can then create a fake text message or fake social media DM or post by selecting any of these. I'm gonna go with a Facebook yeah. chat. You just you edit this CSS. This information, type who you want the fake text message to come from and even type what you want them to say. And when you're done, it'll give you a live preview that you can download. And if I open it up on my phone, it'll look like it's real. I'm gonna show you why you Wait, shouldn't trust- you can't trust everything you see on the internet? Wait for it. Boys have a penis. Hell Girls yeah. Have a Hell yeah. You're going to get me canceled. You're going to get me in so much trouble. In the murky swamps of Washington, D.C., we observe an extraordinary creature, the Brooklyn Knob Gobbler. <laughs> Native to the New York slums, this bird's intellect rivals that of a potato. Elected to represent its fellow knob gobblers, it frequents the House of Representatives, emitting distinctive calls that irritate those in its vicinity. <laughs> Feeding on a unique diet of baby batter, cream pies, and taint meat casserole, the knob gobbler has adapted to thrive in the political <laughs> swamps of DC. Despite its limited mental prowess, this bird provides moments of amusement, occasionally captivating the entire nation with its absurd statements. Despite a lack of notable accomplishments, the knob gobbler's chances of re-election remain high, a testament to the peculiar liberal idiocy of New Yorkers. As the city transforms into a liberal shithole, the consequences of sending knob gobblers to Washington become increasingly apparent. In this liberal cesspool, New Yorkers find themselves reaping what they sowed. Well, those were all funny, but it is safe to say I will never be allowed back on YouTube again. So to my YouTube audience, we had a good run. We all knew this wasn't going to last forever. We all knew that our on again, off again relationship was really just on borrowed time. I will be canceled by Monday. There is no way on God's green earth 
that I will be able to continue to post by, by Monday. So thank you. It's been a great, great journey. We've had our highs. We've had our lows. I'd like to think we had more highs than we had lows. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Uh, I very, very, very much appreciate the support, the jokes, the vibes. Um, so this is, this isn't a see you later. This is probably a legitimate farewell because I think the social media police are going to be coming for me on that one. So salute comrades signing off, signing off, dude, those were funny 12 minutes. You have 12 minutes and four seconds to lock in a free month and get grandfathered into the cheaper cost of $30 a month before it goes up to $50 a month in 11 minutes and 54 seconds. Sign up, hit subscribe. Please, please ensure that the promo code is applied. If it's not applied, your first month's not gonna be free. Then you're gonna reach out to me and be like, dude, why didn't I get a free month? I thought it was applied. And I'll be like, did you double check that it was applied? And I'll be like, oh, I swear I did. And then you didn't because that's what happens. So just please make sure it's applied. Log in. Your first month's free, get grandfathered in. And if in the month of March, you like it, stick around. If you don't like it, sayonara. Uh, but yeah, prices are going up. Prices, pr prices are going up. Uh, they're going to haul me off probably. At least I'll be with all my friends in the uh, insane asylum. Dude, market's just cruising today. Cruising today. Dude, we are pippity popping. Here's the options market. It is going higher high ho silver we are off to the races uh <clears throat> i should probably take my money i'm up what did i start my day with let's just round up and say it was fifty six thousand in the account fifty six thousand multiplied by 0. 0.025 I need to make $1,400 today for my new March goal. And I am already up 2.1K. So I'm past my goal. I should be taking profits. But why? All right. Are there any psychiatrists, psychologists, or just people who understand the human condition of gambling well in here? I have a plan. I have hit that plan. What's going on in my little monkey brain right now that's stopping me from doing it? You know, like what's going on that I'm like, all right, just stick to the plan. And then it goes right. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Like what's what it, it's, not, I don't think it's just greed. I think there's something down in, down in my freaking just DNA. That's off, man. I don't, I think it's more than greed. I think it's, I think it's something. And I don't know what it is. <sighs> what is it? Like, I, I should just do it. Like, I, I, I could just do it. I've been in this trade for an hour. I'm up two grand. Who in the right mind wouldn't take two grand for two hours worth of work? And half that time I was watching videos getting myself canceled. Like, that's conceptually crazy. I should talk to someone about this. It does two grand for an hour. And all I had to do is watch videos on YouTube. And you're like, no, nah, I want more. That's not right. That's not. Oh, narcissist. Of course I'm a narcissist, but I don't think, I don't think narcissism is coming into play on this. Cause like, even before this, I thought I was like the best person fucking ever. Uh, bro. Did you lose 2k again? No, I'm up 2k. Actually, I already made another 2K on the futures accounts as well. Thanks for that, by the way. You guys made that money for me. So you're that's sick. That's awesome. Um, that's sick. That's awesome. Um, I don't know. I should figure that one out. Tokyo Drift for the win. Trumpin. Let's calm down with that type of ridiculous statement. Ridiculous statement. Okay, how do I increase these prices? I want to be payments, admin settings? Payment setup. Uh, 
Okay. Wait, where's the edit button? Uh, save changes. All right, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to do it. Uh, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready to. I'm ready to litter rip. Wait, click here. Click here. Update. Members who are currently credit card supporters, they can get an update, blah, 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 blah. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Speak now, sign up now, or forever hold your peace. You have six minutes, 50 seconds to figure this out. And if you can't, that's on you. I've been warning you guys enough about this that you can't be like, oh, I just missed it by the last second, dude. I've been telling everyone about it for like, the entire month, at least hardcore for the past week or two. So like, what the fuck? Are those turtles? Are those turts? Are those turts? Are those turts? All right, let me see this. Hang on, I'm looking at all the people. I'm gonna have to, I'll manually update the database a couple times today. Uh, for everyone who signs up, obviously private lecture this Sunday, you better be there. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. And then in the meantime, you can watch all the previous lectures to be a little bit more prepped up because they do build off of each other. It's a little bit of, uh, I guess, house cleaning, if you will. Uh, news feed, member lookup, nope. Payments, payments, okay. Okay, good to go. Good to go. Sweet, 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 sweet. All right, what else do we have? We have about seven minutes left in the show. It's a beautiful, uh, the verification link for locals in Discord usually take a while. Um, right now there's probably so many signups that's a bit like lagged, but don't worry as long as you're in it, we'll get it figured out and you will be grandfathered in just make sure for you to be like secure 100%. As long as you're a supporter on locals, you're good to go and we'll figure out the connections and everything. But right now I'm getting a lot of messages that basically you guys are, like it's hitting it too many times that it's causing it to have a little bit of a bottleneck, uh, but we'll get it all figured out today. Uh, you'll be definitely in by, uh, the start of trading week next week. Um, but I, I could see it right now. There's just the traffic is spiking. So the API is like running a little bit slow right now, but no worries. As long as you're a supporter on locals, a supporter on locals, you will be grandfathered in. All right. Cues are picking up. Spies picking up. Do I take the money? Now I'm up 2.7 K. 2.7. And climbing. Uh, I guess I should take some of this money. It would be stupid not to, right? It'd be stupid not to, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, da, da. Ooh, money hit my bank account. That's exciting. All right, um, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Review. Let's start with the S&P 500. S&P 500, new all-time high, which has been the tone for every single Friday that I can actually remember at this point because it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse. It sounds like I'm playing a broken record. Friday, new all-time high. Friday, new all-time high. Friday, new all-time high. It's just cruising. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy Mondays. Uh, same thing with the Qs. New all time high, crushing it. Bitcoin taking a little bit of a breather off the 64, which was resistance, but still hitting at 61, like it's crushing it. Coin not doing as good ever since that tech glitch, but hanging out at 200, not so bad, being as we were just at 120 like three weeks ago. Nvidia's crushing it. Not a new all time high, but it looks like it might be running for that today. So Pelosi's probably happy. 
Netflix has been on my breakout watch list for a while. I've been pitching it to you ever since really it like kind of spiked here on February the 15th. Popped up, fake out, break out, fake out, break down. Recovery, 610, looking good. Meta, breaking out, tagging 500. Netflix and Meta are very, very similar, and I've been watching them both, so hopefully you caught some of that. Microsoft, it's on deck for me. I'm looking for another breakout from Microsoft. I'm looking for the close and hold above 416, and then I'd be interested in it. Tesla, disappointing, not getting this upside gap fill, but getting very, very close to 20677. Rum, green on the day. So nice bullish push, bit of a breather, looking for the cloud to stay green. And I want that next leg to the upside. What else do we have? Amazon breaking out, holding, looking beautiful, very similar to Microsoft and Netflix. Apple looking like trash right now. It is just one of the magnificent seven that is not going the way people want it to go. Oil above 80 for all my energy traders. Congrats to you if you've been bullish because it is looking good, 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 good. Gold picking up to almost a breakout. I have this breakout kind of around 2090. So gold itself and digital gold looking good. Bonds were rough this morning, but bouncing back. In fact, if it can close above the cloud, that actually might be a buy, like a, a swing trade buy signal on bonds. Uh, this might be an impressive close. So definitely watching this bullish breather, fake out, breakout, breaks back down, uh, but trying to flip the cloud now. This could get interesting with a higher reward, lower risk setup. So watching bonds, AMD, I believe this is an all-time high, tag in 200. Yeah, AMD. This was a tough one because it was particularly like particularly choppy and whippy, but if you were able to white knuckle through it, congrats to you. That one's looking good. Um, a AMC shit. I'm taking this off my watch list. I just wanted to know it after earnings, but anyway, uh, the bulls are down dominating, 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 dominating folks. This is your last minute. And then finally, you're not going to have to hear me pitch this so fucking hard pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video, get grandfathered into your cheaper costs right now. And finally, 40 seconds away from me not having to be so fucking annoying about it. Uh, but yes, make sure the code, make sure it's applied. That's how you get the free month. And then price is increasing to 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, um, 25 seconds. <laughs> you guys, for the ones who really waited the last second, you're probably feeling the stress right now. I couldn't even imagine, can't even imagine the stress you're feeling to get that figured out. Oh, what am I at? 2.5, 2.4. I should just take this money. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? What am I doing? Maybe I take half. Maybe take half. Is that the smart thing to do? Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. All right. It's done, though. I hope you signed up. Whatever. If not, it's all on you. It's all on you. This is Wendy's just showing the chart. That's pretty cool. All right. But, whoa, what's going on with F1 here? My thoughts on F1 as an outsider. F1 is boring, too loud, repetitive. The fans are great, though. Red Bull seems to have the best fans. <laughs> Just people getting, like, shit face. That's hilarious. I, ha I haven't been to an F1 race yet, but I want to go so bad. I want to go so, so bad. All right, folks. That's what I have for you. Thick cores signing off i appreciate all the good vibes uh, i'm very very excited for the weekend i am going to just lay it out all on the line at a texas roadhouse tonight i hope you had a great week i hope you had a profitable week i hope you crush it for the remainder of friday and i hope you have an awesome awesome weekend with your friends and family and if you don't like your friends and don't like your family i hope you get some good alone time and do exactly what you want to do but honestly from the bottom of my heart the amount of signups that have been coming through it's astounding. Thank you so, so much. That support, I cannot articulate. There are not words in the English dictionary that could possibly explain how much I appreciate you guys just fucking vibing along, having a good day, day in and day out. Such a cool community, and I'm so, so happy to be a member of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you crush it. We will be posting content throughout the weekend and then streaming once again Monday morning, bright and early. I hope to see you there. Have a good one. Peace out.